Okay, so I'm going to start with liver characters. Um, and first of all, I need to tell you about this. This is a dictionary. Um, it was written in 100 AD and it's a bit weird because ba basically what happened was that uh, the amazing thing about um, Chinese culture is that, um, is that they've used the same characters for 3000 plus years. So um, you can kind of more or less read the characters that they had when they were talking, when they were writing things on, um, on uh, turtle plastrons for divination and things like that. And already by 100 AD, this guy called Xu Shen, he wrote this Shuo Wen Jiezi, um, and he, they already by that time had forgotten why the characters were the way they were. So um, a lot of his uh, interpretations, his, his uh, descriptions are actually not really proper etymological descriptions. They're more like looking at the character and thinking, hmm, I think this might have something to do with this. So if you were really into etymology, then you wouldn't be looking at the Shuo Wen Jiuzi. But it's quite useful because it gives um, good ways of breaking down what's going on in a character. And the Shuo Wen Jiuzi, it's talking about um, speaking about words. That's this bit here. And then here it says explaining characters. So that's what it means. And you'll notice straight away in this one here, this is the thing that I just want to tell you is that the way that a Chinese character is constructed is that it has a radical. And this is, it can be on the left or on the front, right or underneath or on top. <clears throat> and so it takes practice to work out where the radical is. But this particular radical here, this one means it's got something to do with speaking. It's actually got the mouth at the bottom. And then this is what's coming out of the mouth, the stuff at the top. So this is the mouth. Coal. <clears throat> so already I know when I look at this picture here, this, this, I don't really want to call them pictograms, this character here, because they're not all pictograms, is that I know that it's got something to do with speaking. And then actually the thing on the right here, this is called the phonetic. So it's the thing that often makes the sound of the character. And actually this phonetic here, it, it doesn't make the right sound because that, that's actually the character for Dway, which is the trigram um, for the mouth, funnily enough. So this is like two things together that, that mean speaking or talking about in the mouth. And you'll find, I'm using this as an example because um, we often find that when we change the radical, the front bit, then it changes um, the meaning of the word. But by looking at how the word is with different radicals, you understand much more about what different characters mean in themselves. So it's quite a useful sort of little story to go down. This is the character for the liver, which is gun. And I just want to have a little side route here just to tell you about this. So some of you might have already looked at Chinese characters in the past and you'll have been told that this character is the character for the moon. And you'll come across this because um, one of the most common characters that people talk about very often when they start looking at Chinese characters is this one, which is Ming. This is Ming as of um, brightness or clarity. This is the Ming of Yang Ming, yeah? So, um, and the way that you, they explain it to you, which comes from the Shuo Wen Jieta, by the way, is it says the light of the sun and the light of the moon. So it's the whole brightness, uh, the brightness of the sky, any light, any brightness, any clarity. It also means understanding, like, oh, I get it. I'm illuminated, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So this character, you know, we have it as the sun, the re, and the moon, yue. So um, there's a problem with this because... Um, yes, of course, this is the, the, the character, whoops, for the moon, Yue. However, it's also the simplified radical for the flesh. And remember that I said before that um, the flesh, uh, that radicals can be simplified. And so this is actually the character for flesh, and it's called Ro. It's one of the characters that we'll look at when we look at the spleen. Yeah, and it's a picture of meat that is hanging. The first thing we see here is that it's the flesh radical. So it's already telling me that this has got something to do with the physical body. This is some an organ that is in the physical body. Um, so it's got the flesh radical. Sometimes in some Chinese scripts, um, they write this flesh radical 
like this yeah and that's quite useful because it distinguishes it from the moon if you see what i mean but a lot of chinese scripts that you get um when, when you're writing chinese script they write it exactly the same so it can be a bit confusing that's why i spent a bit of time explaining this so on the other side here this is actually the sound gun and it's the same sound it's the same character that you get in the heavenly stems if you happen to be interested in the heavenly stems so the heavenly stems you get um heaven and then the stems so that's a heavenly stem it's a little bit wonky i'm sorry about this this is not an easy job anyway the idea is that gun is a trunk or a stem it's like a vertical axis it's something that's pushing upward originally in the olden days um this bit here this gun thing was also a weapon or a shield especially a shield so the idea of um like the norsemen you know they used to um, plant their shields in the ground so that they could um, stand behind them um, so that you know if they're in wartime then they they made like a shield wall do you see what I mean so um, this is the same idea of this kind of shield the idea of you plant it behind you um, so that you can you can um, you can expose yourself to danger you can attract things to yourself but you're you're somehow protected yeah um and it's also because of the fact that it relates to this shield character and originally it was the idea of a weapon then it you can also be used with the idea of attack or violating a law or creating disturbances or trouble or all those kind of things um and in the shuo wen jitsu then it's already talking about something like opposition or colliding or being aggressive or hitting somebody you know all that kind of stuff because um you know the characters they they chose these characters for the organs and and all this kind of stuff specifically to fit with the quality of the organ but also um to fit with um the 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 sound and the implications that were there yeah there's a lot more to it so um it's got it's still got this upward movement of the of the wood this vertical movement going through difficulties pushing through obstacles which is a very livery sort of thing upward movement but um it's also got this idea about offending uh, opposing uh, and having to push in some way having to really sort of go for it it's on the first line here we go eastern direction ching color brilliant okay i'm slightly obsessed with this um with this particular character i find it ever so useful so um just to break it down into what it is what you find here is that you've got something like that shung that we saw before yeah um so something to do with growth something to do with life something to do with rawness you know that kind of stuff and then underneath that you've got um some kind of moon or possibly it might not really be the moon it might be an extension of this thing here and this thing here i haven't talked about it and i don't think i talk about it anywhere else so i might as well tell you about it now it's called dan and that is cinnabar so cinnabar are very important in um, chinese alchemy um, and it's to do with transformation alchemy is to do with transforming something that is useless into something very special and chinese alchemy especially internal alchemy which is called naidan um, which we now do for instance in qigong or tai chi but you know there was a it was a really big thing so the idea was um and of course we we have you know we have the idea of the dantian the cinnabar fields which are three dantian which are our sources of energy or the sources of jing essence or qi or shen spirit you know all those kind of things so um it's got this idea of um um something precious that allows transformation allows alchemical transformation so that's about dan so it's possible that this thing underneath here it, it looks like the moon but it might have been originally some kind of done thing and um one of the things that i can use to back me up here is that sometimes in old scripts ching is actually written like this rather than with the sort of moon thing underneath do you see what i mean and so this thing here this is much more like the Dan sort of character, the cinnabar character. Okay, so this Qing, 
Um, it's it's uh, variously translated as um, blue green or um, azure or um, black even because black contains all the colors or the color of, of, of the herbs in springtime, the grass coming out of, you know, that green of uh, the grass coming out of the, the, the earth. Also, uh, sometimes they talk about it as being, um, you know, green plants around the well. So the idea about life around the well and the well is, you know, the potential for life and then, you know, life that is expressed by these green plants. So uh, the colour of life that is growing, basically.